Hi guys, Chris Milne here, film and television broker at Spoken Shore. Welcome to the first video in our series of industry insights and tips to simplify and help you get the best out of your production insurances. The content we provide here is also available in PDF format to you, uh, so you can read or refer to this at your leisure. So please do check out our article series as well. Uh, today I'm going to give you four tips or things that you can do which uh, should help you spend less on your production insurance without compromising your cover. Now, you're going to need production insurance to secure funding and investment, um, a completion bond, or perhaps just a good night's sleep. So let's crack on and ensure that you're purchasing this as efficiently as possible. Now, our first tip is to test the market. Now that may seem like a really obvious place to start, but in order to do this properly, you are probably gonna to need to throw away the majority of your old habits when it comes to buying insurance and start afresh. This is because the insurance market has changed significantly and for the better. Now, going back only a couple of years, you were pretty much limited to a single insurer writing production insurance in Australia and New Zealand, maybe one or two locally. Now you've got a handful of very credible insurers wanting to write your business. As a result of this competition, rates are coming down and coverage offerings are much broader. So if you aren't being presented with several different options to consider when you go out to the market, then something's amiss. Um, to give you a quick rundown, these new entrant insurers, they're not fly-by-night insurers either. Uh, you've got the likes of Allianz, largest insurer of film business in the world. These guys write an insane amount of Hollywood studio productions. Uh, you've got Chubb, uh, been servicing the film industry globally for around 50 years now. Um, they write in excess of 100 million US dollars in premium each year in the entertainment space. Uh, then you've got some very competent underwriting agencies as well, writing on behalf of Lloyds of London. Lloyds of London being the largest insurer across all lines of business in the world. So the market for the buyer right now is more buoyant than ever, um, so it's a great time to get yourself an exceptional deal. But in order to generate the best value, you need a strategy around how you're going to approach the market. So your broker should be able to articulate to you a strategy around Firstly, generating market interest, um, then some stage points for negotiation because you're unlikely to get everything from an insurer that you ask for up front. Um, and then also some targets for pricing, coverage, and underwriting flexibility, which is often overlooked as well. So in a competitive market, you can control a whole lot more of this. Um, and I mean, anyone can provide you with a transactional service of completing forms and getting quotes based on standardized off-the-shelf cover, but your production's a one-off uh, and your insurance cover needs to reflect this. So if you engage someone who can challenge and expand your coverage provisions while presenting and selling your risk into the market in an influential manner, um, this is really going to be a benefit. If you're not getting this, then you're not getting the best out of what is a really hot market right now. Uh, tip number two, I call it pitch and save, but it's really just about providing the best information upfront to an insurer. So if you think about it, approaching the market for insurance can be extremely similar to pitching for funding. Um, you'll need your broker to sell all the positive aspects of your production, focusing on the points that lessen potential loss for insurers. So film and TV is a little different to most industries in that so much analysis goes into how you're going to make your production up front, um, so much so that a number of extreme safety measures are in place by the time you start filming. It provides a really safe environment for you to work in, which is great. Uh, but how much of this information gets to an insurer prior to them making a decision on the terms of your quote. Having worked for more than a decade in film insurance as both an insurer and as a broker, so both sides of the fence, I can pretty much say the answer is not enough. This is because the type of information that's going to appease an insurer in, res in this respect isn't asked for in those basic proposal forms that you all complete. The information that's asked for in those forms is relatively high level, and I guess in some ways it's designed to give the insurer comfort over the risk. I'd say it makes up around about 20% of what they actually analyze when they're underwriting your production. The other 80% that's not asked for on those forms, that's the type of information that's going to get you the discounts. And if you don't provide it up front, insurers assume that those things aren't happening. So let's, let's give you an example. Let's say you've got a million dollars worth of film equipment on hire for a production and the insurer form asks you where will the equipment be kept overnight when not in use and you quite rightly answer it will be kept in our locked production offices at x address now the insurer is probably going to be comfortable enough with that 
you're taking a level of proactive measures to protect the equipment. Um, but alternatively, if you said it will be kept at our production offices at X address, which feature swipe card entry on two sets of doors, is fully alarmed uh, with central station monitoring, um, has after hours security patrols, bars on all windows, and once inside the premises, the gear will be further secured in a storage room with deadlocks. Now, both of those responses may be true and correct, but the second is far more likely to secure your discount. So I guess my point is, you all put a huge amount of work into making your productions as safe as possible, but many of you just don't shout about it enough. So spend some time with your broker, building out your submission to insurers, focusing on all these positive measures that you already have in place. Um, don't just ask, answer the questions that are in front of you, go above and beyond with your information, and this will definitely save you money. Now tip number three, and there are two key messages within this. Firstly, remember cover is king. Uh, and secondly, think about efficient ways to insure. So let's be honest, nothing costs more than claims which aren't covered. And with increased competition comes more opportunity to broaden your cover. So almost daily we see circumstances that wouldn't have been covered a couple of years ago now being supported by insurers. Um, there's so much more scope. Insurers are really trying to differentiate their offerings and they're giving you more and more where you push for it. So make sure you do push for it and don't miss out. Uh, through a solid understanding of the possibilities of cover, you can transfer a whole lot of risk to an insurer and off your own balance sheet. And while we're on that point, uh, someone else who really loves broader cover is a completion bond provider. So. If you think about it, the more circumstances you have covered by insurance, the less gaps there are that need to be picked up by the bond provider, which conceivably should result in a lower bond cost for you. So that can be another major financial win. Um, it's also worth giving some thought to policy structure. Quite often people don't give enough consideration to the impact of things like increased excesses being the first portion of any loss that the production is still responsible for paying. So. If you were to save $10,000 on your premium by increasing your cast excess by from $5,000 to $15,000, so by that $10,000 amount, would you consider it? Um, I guess in the best scenario, if you run claim free, you're 10 grand better off. If you have one cast claim, you're in the same net position. And when you consider the funds that sit in the contingency line of your budget, uh, you know normally around the 10% mark, which could potentially cover the increased excess if called upon, then you could easily push the excess out to a point where the premium saving makes a lot of economic sense. Um, from my personal perspective, in my time as an insurer, I seldom saw people creatively structure excesses and cover for financial benefit, um, and it's definitely a point worth considering. Now, my last tip to you, um, I've termed it hold on to your aces, but really what I mean by this is allow your broker to do the best job they can for you, um, and this relates to leverage. So. We see it so often uh, where a producer contacts multiple brokers in order to get multiple quotes. Um, I guess in some ways we're conditioned in terms of insurance to do this to get value. Uh, we all think more quotes equals more value, right? Um, or at least that's what commoditized insurance like car insurance would have you believe. Um, but when it comes to film and TV, one broker can get you those multiple quotes. In fact, they should be. so. By having multiple brokers going into the same markets, um, all brokers lose their ace up the sleeve, which is leverage. Um, and what I mean by this is in a small market, remember there's only a handful of insurers, where you engage multiple brokers, those same brokers approach the same insurers for terms. Um, two things will happen. Either A, insurers will quote multiple brokers and the same terms will be distributed to all brokers and will be based off the first submission received. If this wasn't the most complete or influential submission, you may have lost the chance for better terms and pricing. Um, or secondly, insurers will exclusively only quote the first broker to approach them or, or just one broker. Um, and this can result in some brokers and possibly the most capable ones being shut out of the market. So most importantly, both of the above or both options will limit a broker's ability to negotiate because they can't leverage the quotes in terms provided by each insurer and insurers won't negotiate independently with each broker because that would look like they're favoring one over the other. So in all scenarios, you'll almost always end up with a worse result. So the ultimate scenario is to have a single broker with four or five quotes, uh, and that broker then uses the positive aspects of each to improve all terms um, to a point where the best possible pricing and coverage is generated. So 
our very best advice to maximize value would be to shop around for your broking service um, and give your selected broker the tools to perform for you. So find the one that will A, achieve the best result for you by way of competence and market knowledge, uh, and B, is someone that you enjoy working with because um, they need to be the person that you'd want to, to have on the end of the phone should the worst occur. Because uh, ultimately, when you purchase your production insurance, what you are buying is a relationship and a promise in the event of anything going wrong. And above all, that's really where the true value lies. So there you have it, four very easy tips you can use when next arranging your production insurance. Um, they probably seem very simple in isolation or when explained, uh, that's because they are, but when applied, they will have a significant impact on your insurance cover and spend. Um, very quickly summarized, number one, you're now operating in the most competitive market that I've ever seen in Australia. Um, what this means is you have the best opportunity ever for a cracking deal, but in order to get this, you need to ensure that you're approaching the right markets and in the, in the right manner. Um, so with that respect, test the market, but do it using the right tools and strategies. Number two, spend some time with your broker putting your submission together and asking yourself a lot of what if questions. Once you drill down to this information, you'll essentially create a pitch to the insurance market that earns you the discounts that you deserve. Um, number three, look at some ways in which you can efficiently insure. Um, you know, do this, play around with your coverage and excesses, uh, different structures, and most importantly, push hard for more cover because it is available and it will help present, uh, prevent uninsured losses. And number four, Give your broker the best tools to do a job for you by choosing your broking service first and then empowering them to get out there and negotiate with all parties on your behalf. If you're just getting a transactional service uh, from your broker so far, then it may be time to look at and explore other options. So I hope these help all of you doing great things in the industry uh, and wish you all the very best with your productions. Thank you.